There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. So we talked about CFCs in a bit of detail now, and we said that some of the problems were that they were un insoluble in water, and that they were inert, which meant that they would not be stopped from reaching the stratosphere, but either by rain or by having a chemical reaction decompose them before they reach the stratosphere. That meant basically any CFC that we've used in the past have eventually ended up at the stratosphere. And so obviously where our ozone was, so our ozone was then attacked by the CFCs indirectly. So because what happened was the actual CFC was decomposed by UV radiation, strong UVB radiation, and that caused a chlorine radical to form. And that chlorine radical would then decompose oxygen, uh, sorry, ozone, and form a oxygen molecule and a chlorine oxygen radical. Right? So that's how these two steps were show, just to show you how a CFC again destroys ozone. And this is obviously chain reaction, which means it happens many, many times before it ends. That means that the CFCs cause lots of damage to our ozone, and that's bad because ozone is really important when it comes to protecting us from the sun or strong UVB radiation, which can cause plants to stop growing properly and humans to cause to get to get skin cancer. The actual dot point itself says present information from secondary sources to identify alternative chemicals used to replace CFCs and evaluate the effectiveness of their use as a replacement for CFCs. All right, so CFC, that's your chlorofluorocarbons. These were phased out in, so the um, fluorofluorocarbons, and this is the example of CFC11. It has one carbon, three chlorines, and one fluorine attached. It was inert and non-soluble, and it broke down ozone. And the reason why it broke down ozone, remember the actual UV radiation, UVB radiation, broke this bond. So it would break these bonds, which would mean that this chlorine would then form a chlorine radical, because it's missing one electron, and this chlorine radical would then go on to destroy ozone. Right, so that's how a CFC was quite dangerous. And because it was inert and non-soluble, that would mean that it could get to the actual ozone layer, which is in the stratosphere. It would not be washed away by rain, or it would not be reacted by anything else before it would reach the stratosphere, which meant anything that we would use, would, would uh, any CFC that we used in the past would end up at the ozone. And we also mentioned a couple of times these units, ODP, that's your ozone, O for ozone, D for depletion, P for potential, right? So ozone depletion potential, and we said that the CFCs had an ozone depletion potential of 1, that was kind of a standard, and then some other CFCs that we might have used in the past would have been maybe CFC 113 or CFC 115, and they had ozone depletion potentials of 0 0.8 and 0 0.6 respectively, right? That just means that they break down ozone at a quite high rate. So these were the ones which we used originally. Then we found out in the 1970s and 1980s, so 1970s in the 1980s, we realized that they were causing problems. We realized that they were actually destroying our ozone. For the evidence we gathered for different types of um, photo spect spectrometers, right? So we used the evidence to find out that CFCs were actually causing a problem, which meant we wanted to stop using them. So this is an important sort of name you should remember, the Montreal Protocol. That was a meeting of all different types of leaders, world leaders, and that was held in 1987. And there were follow-up meetings afterwards, but the idea was to work on phasing out CFCs, so they, they made sure to phase out CFCs by 1996, especially in developed countries, so Australia, America, Germany, France, they said, okay, we have to stop using them because they're causing too many damages, and that was done a couple of years later, so they were quite good at removing CFC, and they were also talking about trying to find a replacement, so a replacement for CFCs. And this is what this is talking about. So we need to talk about these replacements that will replace CFC. We need to identify them, so we need to name them. And we also need to evaluate the effectiveness of their use. So how effective are they compared to CFCs? Now, the first one we came up with was your hydrochlorofluorocarbons. And if you can compare the structure of your fluorochlorocarbons to hydrofluorocarbons, the only big difference is that we have a hydrogen being attached instead of a chlorine. But that's actually important because what this means, this bond is easy to break. So it's it's more reactive, it's more reactive, which means it's easier to break. 
And that means we can actually make sure it breaks before it reaches the stratosphere. So we can break this molecule before it reaches the actual stratosphere. It's not, it's not inert like CFC is, it's actually reactive, which means we can break the whole molecule apart before it causes damage. Right? So it's HCFC or hydrochlorofluorocarbon, they are reactive, unlike CFCs which are inert. They're not still non-soluble, so we can't wash, remove them in rain. And, but they, the problem is they do break down ozone. So even though even though they often don't reach the stratosphere, some do reach the stratosphere, and as soon as they do reach the stratosphere, they still break down ozone. But because they are reactive, because we can decompose them before they reach the stratosphere, that means their ODP, or their ozone depletion potential, is lower than CFC. So if you look at these examples here, these are three examples that we're using at the moment, HCFC 22, 123, and 124, you can see their ozone depletion potential is a lot less. So, for example, for 22, it's 0 0.055. For HCFC 123, it's 0 0.02, as opposed to you know, 1.0, 0 0.8, and 0 0.6. So you can see it's a lot less, but it still has some depletion potential. So we still don't want to be using them forever, which is why they are the short-term replacement. We just we were using them to make sure we can have enough time to figure to make a different type of compound that would then not break down anything at all. That would be completely harmless. Right? So the HCFCs are really short-term replacements because we made them to be more reactive, which meant that uh, they would actually break down before they reach the stratosphere, which is good, and that lowered their oxygen depletion potential. But the problem was they still broke down ozone if they actually got to the stratosphere, which means they weren't ideal. So then we came up with the next one, which we're working on at the moment. And we've got a couple of examples ready. So some of them are replacing, for example, refrigerants or air and the actual chemical use for air conditioning, air conditioners, and that is your hydrofluorocarbons. And look, this is this is the formula for HFC 134A, which is the most commonly one used at the moment. And as you can see, the big difference is there are no chlorines. Now, what would this do? Well, no chlorine means that it doesn't cause much problems or any problems to ozone, right? Because it was the problem when the ozone, the C and the chlorine, so that when these bonds were broken, these bonds, they were broken, that's when we had the chlorine radical being formed and the chlorine radical would, would attack ozone. In this case, we have simply have no chlorine in the actual structure, which means that we would have no ozone being damaged. Right? So that's the big difference from the other two. No chlorine in structure, which meant that it was not going to cause harm to ozone. So it was still reactive, and the reason why is because we have these hydrogens in it, which meant that they would be reacting with other different types of chemicals, which would mean that it would be less likely to reach the stratosphere. So it would be less likely to reach the stratosphere. So if it doesn't reach the stratosphere, and again, I'm completely misspelling that. That's why I'm making it not legible, because I don't want you to read this, because it's not um, written properly. But the if it doesn't reach the stratosphere, what that means is it means that there's absolutely no chance of it causing any problems in the stratosphere. It's still non-soluble, which means it doesn't wash away in rain. But the good thing is it doesn't break down ozone, which means that it's absolutely harmless to ozone. And that's shown by the oxygen depletion potential of HFC 134, which has a oxygen potential oxygen depletion potential of zero. Right, so it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to go quickly back to the original one. So here I have CFC, which are the ones in yellow. I've got HCFC, ones in pink, and HFCs, which are the ones in green. These one, ones were the ones which were completely harmless, and the ones in pink were the ones which we were using for the short-term solution, right? So the ones which we just tried to have to make sure we have enough time to think of something else. But so with these ones, even though they caused just as much problems when they actually got into the stratosphere. The good thing is because they were more reactive, what that meant is they would react with something before they could get there, right? So here they would be stopped by reacting with something, which meant that not all of them would actually get into our stratosphere. So that was one good thing about HCFCs. These are our HCFCs. But the problem is if they still got there, they would still cause problems. So here they would still break down ozone. Whereas our HFCs, the harmless version, first of all, they are still reactive, which means that not all of them would get into our stratosphere. Some would be broken down before they get there. But even if they get there, even if they manage to get there, then they would not cause any problems, so it would be fine. I mean, it just, they'd be there, but nothing would happen. Right? So HFCs are the best version in terms of ozone depletion potential, because they have, they have no ozone depletion potential. 
HF, HCFCs were our short-term solution, and the CFCs were the most damaging ones, which were phased out a while ago. So we need to talk about the effectiveness of their use as a replacement. So they were really effective because they had no ozone depletion potential, especially HFC. But the only problem being that it was slightly costlier. It was a bit more costly, so they cost more, the HFCs. And also, they were a bit less effective at what they did. Right? So they were less effective as a refrigerant or an air conditioning unit. But overall, it's a good payoff. Right? I mean, it's going to cost more. It's going to be less effective. But overall, it's not going to damage your ozone, which is the main important part. Right? So it says evaluate the effectiveness of their use. They're being used more and more, these HFCs, because they don't do any damage to your ozone. The only negative part is that they do cost a bit more and they're a bit less effective at what they do. But overall, a small price to pay when it comes to having no ozone damage. And these HSCFCs, these are short-term replacements. And the reason why is because they had less ozone depletion potential, but they still broke down ozone once they actually got into the stratosphere, which meant we had them until we could find a better solution, which now we're working on. So now we're you know, making lots of these HFC 134A, for example. So now we have a better alternative. And we're going to keep working on better alternatives. So we're probably going to have something even better than HFCs in the future. But that's where we're at the moment. We're working on HFCs and hopefully if something even better in the future. Um, and identify the replacement. So HF, HCFCs, hydrochlor uh, hydrochlorofluorocarbons. Example would be HFC 22. And HFCs, example, so hydrofluorocarbons. Difference just that there's no chlorine. And uh, the example would be HFC 134, which has no oxygen depletion potential. These are all alternatives for replacement for the CFCs. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.